Let's revisit the Marion North Journal and see if we can make some sense of the pages and bring some of the ephemera together. Hello and welcome to the Treasured Page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. So let us delve once more into the Marion North Journal, the world of the 1800s where this Victorian intrepid traveller decides to embark on this epic journey across the world to go and visit the most amazing places and to discover all sorts of interesting things but mainly to paint scientific paintings for the purpose of bringing back to London to showcase them in a gallery and to gain respect from her peers. So if you haven't followed along with the story so far, you can find the making of this journal in the Defemerember 2022 playlist here on YouTube. And this beautiful journal has been made from an old jumper. This is junk journaling. Everything here has been made from scraps or reclaimed recycled materials. So this it has been the most amount of fun to make. And you can see here we've got cutaway pieces in these botanical shapes. And the colours are unique and I think we might agree and certainly I noticed it as I was uh, filming and flipping through the defemer ember you can see here the shapes that have come from these pitcher plants are echoed here with colours and all this <laughs> sort of thing which I only discovered after creating the journal so it's just really really special so I'm bringing you the story of Marianne North, really exciting adventures and if you've been following along then you'll remember that we left her in India having a wonderful time, a year off, just living in and amongst the people, painting and travelling and getting to know Dr Bunnell who became a kindred spirit as she puts it, a real friend, somebody who she admired immensely and had a great affection for. And here are some of the paintings that she created when she was on her travels to Borneo and this is the plant that she discovered on her adventures. It has been named after her. Marianne had four plants named after her in her lifetime that she knew about following on from her discoveries and going into far-flung places, tropical locations and jungles and particularly searching out these pitcher plants as they're called from uh, Sarawak River region, the jungle region and she's painted here you know the jungle in the background so they were up high on mountains or hills and she always liked to paint her botanical finds in the setting of where they actually came from so that she can inspire people back at home so they weren't just looking at a dried up leaf on a piece of paper in a herbarium library they were actually able to understand what the natural world surrounding these plants would be like these are the most unusual things that I've ever seen. Of course, they were to Marianne as well. Quite, um, quite different. And over here, it says that they, their botanical name, their Latin name, is Nepenthes northiana, named after Marianne North. How wonderful that this lady could travel the world and gain such an amazing scientific accolade in 1876. And so... These images, I feel, are echoed here on this cover and that is all before I had any idea that this was named after Marianne and yet it seems to be a similar image that I have picked out throughout the journal, the oval shape. This is all about female energy and the amount of unbelievable power force that is behind this lady in the 1800s when women were completely suppressed and perhaps it's because of women like this in the past that have fueled the movements that we've seen in the future. Now the suffragette movement happened 10 years, a decade after Marianne died in 1890 so the suffragette movement didn't really kick start until 1903 and you have to remember that this is Victorian lady 
and she is travelling the world before the light bulb was invented. This is a time frame where we are in darkness here. We are travelling around, there's candlelight, there's uh, oil lamps, but no electricity. We haven't got the light bulb. That doesn't happen for another 10 years uh, in America. And in here is where I am housing these special botanical finds because that was huge. How amazing. And, and like one of the subscribers said, how was she ever allowed to have that plant named after her when she had all these men against her up to a point? We had art critics saying that her paintings weren't um, scientific enough and that they they didn't have the detail and the correct analytical vision that you required where you have a dissection of the plant and then be able to see the seeds and everything within. Well, no, but what she did provide was a glimpse of where these plants would grow, where they're from. This is another one that she discovered. This is a coffee plant, a very rare coffee plant even today. It has blueberries, not red. So blue coffee, who knows? We don't know if that's a thing. But it was discovered 150 odd years ago. And Marianne was only granted the privilege of having the scientific botanical name of this plant honoured to her in 2020. So that is, that is how slow things work. <laughs> So I think that there's a, a little wait for us all to be able to enjoy a cup of blue coffee. But uh, if we do in the future, in our lifetime, we can thank Marianne North for discovering it first. And so we're celebrating women here, and one in particular. And let's have a look at where we can now start to make sense of this journey. But as we all know, it's not what you know, it's who you know that can help advance you in your life and it's no exception here for Marianne. Her father was very good friends with Charles Darwin and in 1859 when Charles Darwin published The Origins of Species, the book that really changed things for people. Uh, Marianne was set to bring his theories alive through her painting and her artwork and these two did converse a lot with private letters and she was utterly inspired by the work and his knowledge and she sought out knowledge. So how did a woman with very little limited education, just the backing of her family and I think she did go to school very briefly, it didn't work out because Marianne is, as we find out, a real rebel and she was not one for listening to what they taught women in schools, which was sewing and how to keep housekeeping and she did not want that for herself. She did not want a life of a glorified servant, as she put it. That's what she felt she would become if she was somebody's wife. So with that, Marianne refuses to get married. She has suitors, but she turns them down. And instead, she makes a promise to her mother to always look after her father, which is perfectly fine by Marion and it becomes apparent that she is very much favoured by her father who calls her Pop. She is the youngest of three. She has an older brother who the mother favoured and she has her sister Catherine and her sister Catherine although the, the two sisters are close she marries and subsequently has children and that is not the life that Marion wants. So she has, well, after her mother dies, she has made this promise to, to the mother and the family that she will look after the father and travel with him. His state business and ambassador roles where he goes to other countries and Marianne, she travels with him absolutely willingly. And when she does that, she's also able to paint and she paints watercolours. She's an accomplished artist. She, she does a lot and... Uh, quite um when she sets her mind to something she she she's relentless she won't give in she's she's very strong-minded and 
and creates a lot. And if it's not music and going to concerts and learning how to play the piano and sing and doing it very well to a professional level, then she's also she, she's learning to paint. But she becomes very frustrated with watercolour because she cannot achieve the bright colours that she wants. She cannot emulate what she's seeing in nature. And when she's going over to travel with her father, they go to Europe and uh, she gets frustrated that she's not able to capture some of the colours, some of the vibrancy of the red tones and things she sees in Italy and places like that. And the only possible way of capturing these vibrancies of reds and oranges that she desires is through oil paint. Well, her father arranges for her to meet with an Australian artist and he comes over and gives her lessons in how to paint with oil. Well, that's it. Once she's learnt how to do that, she cannot put it down and she becomes obsessed. And so she she paints. She paints and she paints some more. And what happens is, very sadly, her father passes away and he, he passes away in Hastings and it's at that point where she's devastated and she decides to leave and go and go on this epic adventure around the world and she's managing her grief by painting, trying to get into quiet space, getting away from everybody and everything that reminds her of her father. She says she will be forever changed and she cannot... Um, you know, the the love that she had for her father is just too much to bear. And so off she goes and uh, we see her travelling off to America with a friend. And have a look at the videos if for those stories. They're really quite fun. But today what I want to do is I want to go through and have a look at the journal and make sure that things are where they need to be. And we'll just have a quick little look at that and all the paintings and things that we see. So this is in Java where she visits and the beautiful volcanoes. And this is, I believe, this is Sri Lanka. How utterly wonderful. And one thing about Marion North's uh, paintings is she always hid her signature somewhere within the painting and would make you search for it as a fun little thing. So you may find that her signature is up the palm tree or you may find it's on a rock or a branch somewhere, but uh, these paintings have been cropped to fit the postcards. But uh, there are there are other paintings in here where you can find her signature so if you were to see her paintings for real and you can in Kew Gardens in London you can have a look for each signature they're hidden on the paintings so that's something that I intend to do this year. The Marion North Gallery is closed at the moment for refurbishment but I think that's absolutely fantastic that they are looking after it. Although before Marion passed she had left instruction that under no circumstances must any painting or anything be moved in her gallery. It has to be the way in which she left it. <laughs> So there we go. The orders have been given and uh, let's hope that they maintain the building and we'll talk more about the gallery as we go through because I haven't got to all of that yet in the book. I'm still reading it, but I am going to I am going to have a look at this. Glue that top and bottom. That's better, I quite like that now. And this is printed onto a really nice handmade paper. This is uh, my freebie, um, which is a copy of an original from my friend in Japan. So that's some Japanese writing. I'm really hoping that I've got it the right way up. And we'll just have a look at some things as I flip through, just some obvious bits, make sure that I'm happy where they're all at. So half the time, Marianne was battling with the establishment from the smoky rooms of the old men's clubs where they used to sit with the newspaper and the broadsheet and pontificate about things and have a look at the world and the news and 
women had their place and it certainly wasn't in a man's world and it most certainly wasn't travelling and painting and making a nuisance of oneself. Well, she had to because she had the desire to bring visions of nature to everybody. She even spends a year painting mushrooms after her mother dies. So that's why we've got the mushrooms here because she did a really big study on the subject of fungi and paints them in watercolour, which is a is perfect for watercolour mushrooms, but not so much tropical flowers. So she had a, had to get a better medium, and that was of course the oil colour. So I'm just going to cover up this avocado dye, which has got a funny mark in it from the tin I used to dye it on. I'm just going to stick this down here I think and this is the beautiful mushrooms in time kit from Brigitte at Klee Black Creations so uh, the link to that is here below and on the reverse of some of these I've got the ledger paper watercolour so that's another digital kit as well I think I'm just going to glue this down. Yes, lov lovely digital kits being used throughout the journal and some nice ephemera pieces I'm going to add as well just to help embellish. And that is all available on the Etsy site and I'll leave the link below to, to what I've put in this journal should you want to be inspired so it certainly is part of Marianne's story to have the mushrooms because it is, as I said, when her mother dies, that's what she goes off and furiously paints for a year so she didn't have the best relationship with her mother but it does it does seem that art is the way that she she heals and puts things right and that is the way that all of us heal is through art and creativity. It really is the only way to manage when we're going through tough times. And that's why journaling is so important and junk journaling as well. And if you don't feel that you can express your emotions or feelings, I think this is a lovely way of doing something because you are able to have hidden journaling and tuck things away and maybe think about something else or somebody else and sort of reflect upon their life and see how similar it is to your own. So for me, Marion North is a woman in her 40s. I can relate to that. And she's travelling the world. Well, I'm not, but I'm journaling with her and I feel like I am. And I'm putting out YouTube videos to people all around the world and having connections with people from different countries which makes me feel that this journal is very much part of what I'm doing here with the treasured page and my intrepid adventures albeit from my quiet crafting space is definitely feeling like I have a little connection with with art around the world. And then we're coming over to the place where we left off where she was in India, visiting India. And she loved it so much she ended up staying for a year. I think that's wonderful. I think that she settled because it was lovely and hot and she just felt that that was something that she... She felt that that was a country that she could stay in for a while and she makes lovely friends there. She has a friend in Dr. Bunnell who she meets on the boat to Java. Uh, some couple of years before, she doesn't realise that she will end up befriending um, Arthur Bunnell later on in life when she is formally introduced and she then stays with him at his home and is his guest when she is travelling in India and she wants to help him with his books and things that he is writing. 
and she just finds him to be like a walking dictionary. She absolutely loves surrounding herself with interesting people that can help her learn and she can just converse in a way in which she wants to. She doesn't want to just be one of the other British people that are over there just interested in lawn tennis and croquet and fashion. That's just not her thing at all. She's a scientifically minded an artistic and bohemian woman who wants to learn from others and and engage in the new thinking of different different topics other than tennis other than badminton and uh, living a high life and of course here is my kingfisher um, card and this is one of four that were made for artist trading cards and here are the other three and I would very much like to offer these as giveaways and I think some and many of you put down your name for one and I will now be picking the winner okay so they're all orientated that way up and they're in come in a little glassine bag and then they will be part of a little bit of happy mail so there's one with the kingfisher swooping down from a cliff fall. That's what it looks like to me into the water below. And there we go. And I'm very envious of the people that have said that they have spotted a kingfisher, particularly Lucy, who says that she's seen one in the UK. So Lucy is our intrepid adventurer who went to the botanical gardens in Ness in um, near Liverpool and brought us back some photographs. Uh, and she did wonder if she might be sent off to the tropics to go and do some photographing for us over there. <laughs> and I said, well, that's entirely up to you, but obviously that's going to cost you money. <laughs> but a kingfisher picture, uh, Lucy, would be awesome. And a shout out to Linda. Healing thoughts from everybody here as you go in for a, an operation I know that you're not looking forward to. So best of wishes from everybody here, your YouTube friends from the Treasured page. Uh, you are over in Cyprus, so good luck to you. And um, a shout out to Rola from Sweden. I'm very, very sorry that you have broken your leg. Please, please get better. And a shout out to Terry in California. Please watch out for those floods and I hope that you are having fun in your quiet creative space and thank you for all your support. And another shout out to Nancy G. I'm so pleased that you have received your parcel and I'm looking forward to any pictures that you send my way when you have made the journal that you're talking about that would be wonderful uh, Nikki in the Netherlands I will share some photos with your permission um, of the journal that you have made using the happy mail that I sent last time so well done it well done girls and thank you so much for getting in touch and all your fabulous support okay let's see if we can pick the first winner here good luck everybody here we go CS and you've said happy new year lovely cards love kingfishers as always great storytelling fascinating lady and I appreciate this because you have written in quite a few times CS I don't know your name but that is wonderful okay so CS thank you very much and I know that you watch regularly and you comment regularly because I do remember you so if you could get in touch and email me your address I will send you some happy mail so congratulations let's pick another winner here we go oh, <laughs> this is 2281 cozy brick cape and I recognize your picture so I think you've changed your name recently so I know I think I know who this is um, but uh, if you could send your address and let me know I'm pretty sure you are from the US okay that's wonderful and you have said I love how you collage your ACT cards the faux leather is brilliant and the cards are beautiful I love hearing the story of Marianne North and I can't wait to hear what happens to Marianne next that's brilliant okay thank you and then the next winner here we go final call good luck everybody okay, here we go judy oh that's lovely 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 atc's enjoying the continuation of your story 
Judy Jacobson. Thank you so much. OK, everybody, there we go. So that is the three winners. So OK, so they're going to be packaged up for you and sent off. So do get in touch. You need to email me on my email address here as soon as possible and then I can post those out to you and you can have a lovely Kingfisher card. And I did put them, I did put a label on the back there and my signature and they've all got a little bit of Marianne North painting on the back of them so uh, there's they look a bit like that all right so that's that's number four that was that one and then that's number three looks like that one and I shall do them in order and then that one is number two so what that must have been number one so that's number two number three and number four they will be coming out in the order that I picked them and you will be sent them very shortly as soon as you get your names over to me and anybody who doesn't will be picking again so actually I'm not going to read a story because I've already been talking about her today because I want to just get back into it because I had a little break to go and do my Nordic uh, journal which was a sort of a frosty one and because um, Marion wouldn't have wanted to come along for that at all because she doesn't like the cold so uh, it's quite nice to have a little break actually. I did feel with all this journaling and the tropics and the lovely flowers all over the world, I did actually feel during Defemeremba that I didn't get much of my winter crafting done. It just felt uh, hmm, like I'd sort of not missed out because I didn't want to do all the jingle bell business but because um, I did a bit of that in November and I did my Yule journal and things like that. But I, what, what I wanted to do was just acknowledge the season change you know the from the autumn to winter that's rather good isn't it I like that there so maybe we'll have oh no I like it the other way I'm going to cut this and just put that in there yeah so fancy going to India for a year isn't that wonderful being in that time frame Victorian woman traveling with all of her things she had to take all these boxes of all of her all of her um luggage she had to take all the paintings with her that she did and often she was away for a really long time she used to try and go back for Christmas to go and spend time with her sister and her family but she didn't like the cold so she hated going back and before she left for India she um she was sort of Lots of people were, and, and she doesn't get on with lots of people. She she gets overwhelmed. So what she had to do... She goes home to London uh, to visit family and also to take back her paintings. There's only so much she can carry and before it, it all gets a bit ridiculous trying to travel around these paintings she couldn't trust anybody to take them home for her so she had to do that herself as well uh, so she comes back to London and she's then met with a lot of questions about her artwork and people want to meet her and she's has to go and visit people and discuss the artwork and the botanical finds well that's all well and good but after a time it, it got quite wearing and she started to get quite a lot of pop popularity I suppose a little bit of fame if you like and that really wasn't um, agreeable to Marion who's a quiet person uh, she's quite introvert um, but she is uh, forced to be reckoned with at the same time so not all introverts are wallflowers definitely not um, and later in life she does develop some anxiety as well so I think many people can relate to that particularly if you've been through some sort of uh, you know so you've got you know life upsets we all can experience a bit of anxiety from now and now and then and need to retreat to our quiet spaces I know that I can relate to that so when you're using a Fabri-Tac glue, it's going to seep through if you get it when it's too wet. So I just need to put a bit down, but then always leave it to go off. And then I think I'll flip it over and, and I should be OK. But I quite like this little embellishment up here on this sari silk. 
Isn't it lovely? I just sort of found some strips, this ri ribbon. I've had it a while now and it's just something that I found. I think it was a seller on Etsy where I got this from a long time ago when I first started looking into sari silks and things. Not necessarily for junk journaling actually, it was for a different project. Right, that's quite nice, I like that. Yes, I like that. That sort of spills out over here. Oh, I've got this nice paper that I've been sent from Joanna. So that might want to come there. Right, I'm going to tear that bit there. This is beautiful thick paper with this lovely paisley Indian design. And I think I'm going to stick it there. And then we'll do something else. And this has got some leaf in there, which has caused a stain on the paper. But I think I'll put something over it. So I'm just going to glue it on there. Yes, yeah, so Marion had her gallery. She was invited to, I think it was Kensington Museum. And she had to take her paintings there. And she's trying to get trying to get herself to India and having to catalogue all of her paintings and write notes about them all so she could leave them all to have a good look at her paintings while she nipped off out of it so she wouldn't have to have all these social occasions with everybody. It was almost like, right, there's, there's everything, you carry on, I'm off. And so off she went, off to India. And I think she thought, oh, I can't handle that. <laughs> I'll stay out here for a year and hopefully it's all settled down. But it didn't when she went home. She was more pop and more famous than ever and they were desperate to see what she'd brought back from India and that was that she became known and um, yeah so she she had even more inquiries to negotiate um, quite fun that's a little bit too much is it for Marianne Oh, I like that. Isn't that nice? What else can we have? How about how about this colour? I'm feeling orange. I'm in an orange mood today. How about that? This is just, and then maybe that come in and be a real wow. You know, just a little bit of wow. Why not? Let's put some glue down here. And uh, it's a bit sad about Dr. Bunnell in the end, who uh, Marianne absolutely finds a real friend in. And she she's older than him. I think I think there's about six years in it, something like that. And uh, well, may, maybe she's a bit old. Maybe there's ten years difference. I'm not sure. When he dies, he's only in his forties. It's very sad, and we don't know what it, I don't know what he died of. We'll have to look that up. But he, um, you know, she is aware that he is becoming ill, and has asked him to send for her if he needs somebody. You know, she will go out of her way. She will. If you if you ask me to come, I will come, is what she says to him. So I don't think that... I don't know if that happens, but uh, that must be devastating when you've really made a friend. She'd made her decision never to marry, and she sticks to that, and I think there is uh, words to that effect in one of their writings, is that you, you needn't worry. And I don't think he wanted to marry either. They just wanted to get on with their work you know, and be left alone. They didn't want all of that. So they were just two peas in a pod, really, and it would have been an ideal match to just be friends. Um, but, of course, you know, he becomes really ill. And you have to remember, you're in a Victorian times where people did become suddenly very ill. Yeah, so and Marianne herself suffers with all sorts as she goes around travelling the places, but uh, she seems to bounce back... Um, for most of her travelling time. That's a bit now too samey, so we need something else. 
I've got a bit of this. How about a bit green? No, that's reminding me of Christmas. Right, how about some purple and that shot of blue. I'm just using my trim here really, having a nice time, just having a little break, a little relax. Um, January seems to have kick-started in quite a phenomenal way with lots of house maintenance issues. Has anybody else felt that? I thought, oh my goodness, really? Uh, light bulbs keep going, boilers playing up, you know, those kind of life things. So, um, yeah, we've had a bit of that. Kids going back to school, that's been okay. They've enjoyed that. So everybody's all right here. Hope you're all well. Shout out to everybody who is going through some tough times this January with either the weather or the cold or extreme heat, one of the two. And also anybody facing appointments and surgeries and things that they'd rather not. I do hope that you are going to be looked after and you will be back in your quiet crafting spaces soon. And do remember we've got the podcast as well. So anybody who can't get to their craft tables for one reason or another and you still just want to have a little listen. I'm not doing any... Um, stories but I'm trying to be as inspirational as I can this January just to sort of give us a few little pointers on uh, clearing up clutter and all of those things that help well, I, I look around the room and I think oh I've done two projects and everything's slowly descending into into a model but uh, that's how it goes, isn't it? And we just have to keep on top of it. And I think after this, I better do some scrap busting. So we'll have to have a scrap busting one, I think, is the next one because um, the scrap tray's got a little bit over the top. So we need to do some scrap busting. Uh, collage will be good. So that would be nice. I think that would that like to come up there. Brown and pink is always quite nice, isn't it? Let's have that what to do with a little little bit of rag could be off a piece of clothing couldn't it and we'll have a bit of green there and just putting it on with some Fabri-Tac and bringing in some colour and vibrancy that would have been seen in India in this time and then I think after India she goes back to the UK and she gets bombarded by everybody wanting to know all about her travels because she's been away for such a long time. She meets with Charles Darwin and sends him some samples of pictures and either invites him to her home or she goes there. Perhaps she goes there. He's getting a little bit older now. Charles Darwin in his latter years, a great friend and... Um, Yes, of course, he encourages her to uh, continue her work if she's going to carry on. She really must complete her paintings and visit Australia and New Zealand, uh, as he did. And so she she has to. She sees that as a, a real challenge to do. And uh, she's doing it when she's when she's a bit older. And of course, that's a very long journey, isn't it, in Victorian times? Very long journey in today's times from England, you know, long old journey. Not as long as it was there, though, on a boat, my goodness. Very brave to be on a boat all that length of time. Um, so, yes, I think the journey does catch up with Marianne. I'm not sure that she has such a good time of it. And I'm not sure what time of year she visits either. There we go. Now, this should be still some hidden area here. OK, now we've still got a hidden panel there, which is quite fun. I like that. That's really good. OK, we've got some from India here. Um... So there's a mountain in the background. Let me just check. Aren't they lovely? How do you choose? So, oh, look. 
Magnolia, a climate of Darjeeling. Amazing. Look at that. And then we've got this one. Now this is the Indian rhododendron. And this is why this becomes so important, is because she starts painting rhododendrons from around the world, particularly in India. She's, she, um, she paints a lot. And who loves rhododendrons and brings those back and becomes rather obsessed by that? And it's Arthur Bully from my journal before, who will have been inspired by Marion North because when he was just starting out his adventures at the Ness Botanical Garden um, in Cheshire near Liverpool, he goes out to find seed from rare rhododendrons in China and he will have seen these and fallen in love with the paintings and been so inspired because he had huge connections with Kew Gardens and would have gone down there. And when he went down there, he would have gone to the the, the gallery. You just would have done because that's what you did because that was one of the things to do. And to go and see them in the natural environment as she's painted them all alive and really like a holiday brochure style of painting, Arthur Bully would have been utterly transfixed by some of the images here and if he's seeing what she's trying to bring to the masses to be viewed as a painting and a picture he wanted to bring the real thing to garden and gardens in the UK and all over the world by delivering seed for people to grow themselves and so that's why the two journals and the two stories are connected because Marianne found plants that Arthur wanted to have and that's why they're so special and and why he would have been utterly inspired by her and Charles Darwin it's up here because there's a spare paper clip bit there and that all links so isn't that just lovely I love that with it all blending in I'll just tuck this one in here Well, there we go. I think I'm going to leave that there. And down here, I've stuck that down, but I've got two little pockets here. I've got one for a ticket and one for something else. And then these are the papers that I was given at Christmas in my little packs from Joanna. There we go. That's really fun. And there we go. This is nice and vibrant, isn't it? It says wander down there and it's exactly what Marianne used to do. She wandered and painted and I think there's even a quote from her that involves the word wander. So we'll look that up and see if I can um, maybe write that under there or something. But uh, I'm utterly inspired by this. It's just fun and it's all coming together and I love the sort of higgledy piggledyness of it. Just this eclectic traveller's guide and oh, just just brilliant really really good fun nice and positive lots of bursts of energy here so just uh just add some color to your journaling experience this week and see what you've got and give a little bit of zhuzh and, uh, and vibrancy to your work and congratulations to those that won the atc cards they will be on their way to you hope that this has been fun hearing all about marion and do please subscribe if you'd like to hear more OK, everybody, thank you so much for watching. And above everything else, just slow down and make crafting time for you. Bye-bye now.